This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. Native Dynamic SQL, again usually called NDS, simplifies much of the coding required to run Dynamic SQL. For a long time it was faster than DBMS SQL, but that's not really so true. I've run some tests that they're very close performance-wise, depending on what you're doing. It's quite a bit easier to code, though, and that means it's easier to maintain. There are a few limitations where DBMS SQL is still the better choice, but almost in most cases you'll see Execute Immediate now rather than DBMS SQL. The biggest limitation that NDS can't handle is the dynamic set of columns. DBMS SQL, you can actually refer to each column in the bind, and you can loop through a table of columns and just say bind this one, bind this one, bind this one, bind this one, or column value, column value, column value. In NDS, you have to know ahead of time what columns you have and how you're going to use them. So the basic format of an NDS statement is the execute immediate that says do this right now. It's the execute this code. And in this case, I'm doing a DDL. It's a create table statement. And we've created this table earlier, although we had a third column. So you see that NDS can do DDL just like DBMS SQL. It can do DML. It can do select. It can do stored procedures. NDS is easiest when you're doing this because you have no extra clauses. Let me grab a cursor that we did earlier. And we've seen this several times now. This is the cursor where we just opened the cursor, fetched out a row, and we had the P employee ID that we passed in. In this case, it was 101. We closed the cursor and we display the output. Now, to convert this into an NDS, it looks a bit more complex than the static, but it's less complex than a totally dynamic. So like the DBMS SQL, I convert my cursor into a cursor string, and I put the colon in front of my bind variable. I create a local record of employee type, even though I'm not getting every column, that's just the easiest way, rather than creating a record type and then a type from the record type. I set my local employee ID to 101, just like before I was passing to the open, I was passing the 101. Now I'm just setting a value. Okay, now we get to the NDS. I'm saying execute immediate this string in two, just like a select in two, I'm going to select the first column into last name, last name into first name. Oh, so I even got those backwards. I should have had first name, last name. Yeah, I found a bug. But then email into email, phone number to phone number, hire date into hire date. Using, and that's saying use this value as my first bind variable, which I only have one bind variable, so it's that. And then I log it. Let me go ahead and view that. Clear that. And I'm 101, if you remember, was in Kochar. So we were, it's working just like before, returning the same row. The nice thing about the NDS is how much code it wraps up for you. So if you remember, we had the define the columns for DBMS SQL. We had to bind the value. And then when we return the values, we had to say column value to get all the values back. So it really simplified things quite a bit from the DBMS SQL perspective. Slightly more complex than just a straight select into, but really not that much more. The using and into clauses are positional, as I mentioned. You need to do them in the same order. If you use the same bind variable multiple times, like say I had last name in the return and in the where clause, you would just refer to it once. You see that most often in stored procedure calls. Rarely do you see that in a SQL. If you don't have any inputs to it, of course, the into and using is optional. As we saw in the example before, you don't have to have those. If you're calling a stored procedure, you wouldn't have an into, but you'd have the using, and you can tell it whether it's an in, an out, or an in out. And that's the mode, just like a parameter. And you can tell it, are you going to pass a value into it? Are you passing a value out? Or are you going to do both? So here are some simple examples. Let's walk through this real quick. I'm going to do an execute immediate. I'm going to do an insert into the tab ABC, setting column one and column two to these bind variables. I'm saying using A and B. So I'm going to insert a row. I'm going to set it to A and B. Then I'm going to do my row count for the number of rows I inserted. I'm going to update my table, and I'm going to set column one which the value was A, to C, where the column is B. 
then I'm just going to delete where column two is B. So I'll end up with no rows in my table again. Go ahead and view that. Run it. Insert one row, update one row, delete one row. So let's look at that one more time. So we're using the using clause to populate the bind variables in each of these DMLs. Here I had new call, old call. I'm using CB. And here I'm just have one bind using the using. Sometimes you'll want to return values from a DML statement. So if you just look at the insert, I'm actually saying insert into this table, setting my values, and I'm going to return the column one back. So where you really use this is if you're using uh, sequences, for example. You insert into the table, you'll use your sequence call, but you want to get that number back so you can use it later on. Well, to do that, this is regular SQL. I'm doing this return into a bind variable. I'm saying use A, and this is positional, A, B is called to val, and my out, remember the mode, is V output. So this is going to basically run the insert, insert A and B into the columns, and return A into my V output. And then we'll log it. So let's take a look at that. The output is A. So that worked. Another way you can do that, if you don't want to worry about the mode, instead of having the out variable, you can actually say for input, and the default mode for using is in, so you say for the using, it's going to go in to A, in B, returning into V output. A returning into is always an out parameter. And this works the same way. I've heard arguments about which is better for maintainability. I think it's more of a personal choice. My choice is that you pick one and you stick with it. You don't mix, you know, one statement has a mode and the next statement uses the returning into and things like that. That makes it very hard to keep track of what's going on in the code. You can also call a stored procedure. And in this case, I'm going to call my log it procedure. Very simple. I'm going to execute immediate, begin, log it, and I'm going to pass in the message in the display mode. So it's execute immediate, begin. This is my valid PL SQL ending with a semicolon. SQL and DML don't end with a semicolon. Using, this is my message, and this is my display mode. This is my dynamic message, this is my dynamic message, and it came here rather than to the table, which is what my display mode does. So you see, it's really no different. Using is how you get your bind variables in, returning into if you have a returning statement, or you can just use using for all of your variables, whether they're in or out. Purely a matter of choice. I kind of like using the using. So you can also do a lot of different things we're going to get to in a few minutes. I'm going to take some of the examples we used for DBMS SQL and convert them to NDS. That's going to be in the next part.